Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Keith Brooks. I chair the Arcadis Mace Joint Venture, who have been appointed uh, to program manage the construction of uh, the Kingdom Town. Um, now, like all uh, events like this, it's really unfortunate to follow an architect with all their pretty pictures. My slides are going to be a bit more wordy, but I'll try and bring it to life if I can. So what I'm going to talk about today is, is really four things. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, well, what do we mean by program management, why is that different to project management, and why do we think the Kingdom Tower is in fact actually a program management uh, uh, job. Uh, you can't talk about uh, constructing towers without talking about health and safety, and you can't talk about health and safety um, uh, at events like this um, uh, without uh, uh, really emphasizing the importance of that. So I'm going to just dwell a little bit on health and safety. Um, I'm then just going to pick out one element of our program role, and that is the importance of controls, and just explain a little bit about how we've <coughs> approached the controls environment on the Kingdom Tower. Um, and then touch, really build on, actually, a point that Adrian made, which is, well, look, do towers really have a wider impact than just the tower themselves? So I'm just going to talk about one aspect of looking at that, which is quite a uh, hot topic at the moment, this whole idea about benefits and agglomeration benefits of major uh, development. So the Kingdom Tower, we hear a lot about that, some fantastic models at the back there, um, but it's not just about a tower. Okay, there are some other things at play here, some really important things at play. One is the context of the Kingdom City itself and the impact the Kingdom City is going to have on the development of Jeddah. That's another level beyond the tower itself. And even beyond Jeddah, there's the issue about the impact on the nation um, and the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And we heard in the opening sessions this morning the importance of towers and how they match nation's aspirations uh, and nation's passion. So why do we think, sorry, why do we think this is a program management uh, uh, opportunity? I've tried to put a little diagram here that's just trying to break down the complexity uh, of this scheme. And we rather see the, the tower as a sort of vertical, uh, vertical program. And this diagram is, is pulled from another piece of research, but I think it quite neatly encapsulates the fact that in major programs like this, there are so many different interfaces at work. You have the interfaces within the project itself, and then you broaden that to the wider stakeholders. This is, and, and programs are not just, with all due respect to lawyers in the room, just uh, bigger projects with more contract procedures stuck around them. They're much more complex than that. They're very dynamic, they're very unique, and they demand innovation in all aspects of their, of their delivery. So on the diagram on the left there, where you see all these little lines and these lines of communication, the other thing that's going on there is innovation and innovation and learning. So we as program managers have to try and create an environment that enables that to happen, but enables it to happen in a controlled way. Of course, when you then think about a very complex program, you then throw in a couple of other things which says, look, actually we want to be the first people to build at one kilometer high and we're going to do it in a pretty hostile environment. So you add all those layers of complexity and you've got quite a big management challenge there to address. So how do we look at this? I think the key thing here on the left-hand side there is you've got to start with the client objectives. What is it they're trying to achieve? And you have to understand the organization, the client organization, and how they're geared up to deliver the project. And around that, our role is to define a series of processes, procedures, controls that enable all the moving parts to move in a coordinated way. So, normally, so if you look at the tower, the way we've approached this, you said if you call it a program, the diagram on the right, if you look at each of those projects as an element of the tower, so the project might be the cladding, the project might be the BMU, the project might be the piling. And if you break those projects down, you can start to manage in a much more controlled environment. And of course, events like today and, and, uh, uh, and the whole uh, event this week is very much geared about celebrating design innovation, quite rightly. But program managers are learning too on this. We have to innovate. We haven't got a book on the shelf that says, right, here's the controls or the program management system 
that's going to build a tower. We have to learn and we have to develop as well. So there's a huge amount of innovation going on in what we're trying to do. And we've really focused on, on four key areas um, in, uh, in developing this. We have um, assured outcomes, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that from a health and safety um, uh, uh, perspective. We're then talking about efficiency and productivity, and this is really where the controls environment um, uh, comes in. Um, we've got transformation opportunities, and then we've really got the commercial outcomes as, uh, as well. And I'll touch on the transformation outcomes at, uh, at the end. So, health and safety. So, clearly, um, the standards of health and safety um, that uh, uh, you experience in different parts of the world are very different. Okay? The standards of health and safety in the Middle East are very different to they are in the UK. That's a fact. Very different to they are in the US. Okay? You can't ignore that. You've got to accept it. Okay? So, a whole drive here, supported by JEC, the whole of the Kingdom Tower team, SBG, all of the designers, is to make sure that the standards of health and safety that we apply on this project are exceptional in the context of the Middle East. Okay? So we're looking to push the boundaries here, and our role is to create the environment, encourage everyone to make sure that health and safety is absolutely at the top of the agenda. Now, as program managers there, what we do is we set the culture, we set the behaviours, and we sure ensure actually it's at the forefront of everything that happens. We have a great team uh, of experts, experts in Dar al Handasar, SBG and, the, and the, the various trade suppliers who then pick that up and implement and develop the detailed um, strategies and plans and actions that we then oversee and fine tune. Okay. Now today we've had a pretty good safety record on the, uh, on the Kingdom Town. We're all very, very focused on ensuring that that continues. The other area that we're looking at is to make sure that in those big high-risk areas we've got very detailed plans well in advance of uh, the work happening. And that need to be uh, and desire to be in advance of, of everything really underpins the program management role and our need to put together what I'm calling this controls environment. Now the way we looked at this, and I think whenever, when, to reason, whenever young people, people talk about controls, they think this is someone who's just reporting, is just collecting data and reporting what's happening. So the way we looked at this, we said, look, we can't do that. There has to be an added element here, and the focus has to be about forecasting, this, this need to innovate and predict and then try and control what's happening. And the way we looked at this, we created a, 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 a simple five five box model I guess. So really looking at the team, how do you drive collaborative behaviours, how do you make sure roles and responsibilities are clear. We then looked at the processes. So what are the different work streams and activities that need to come together in a coordinated way to construct a tower such as this. And then go to another level of detail which is about driving those actions. Then think about um, okay, some, some product um, uh, performance criteria and then really focus on the outcomes. And that was really what was um, driving the uh, development of our control network. So what we did is we, and, and we're continuously developing this, is to set a very clear set of KPIs that drive performance. Okay, so we're unpacking the whole process of construction, breaking it right down and seeing what are the behaviours and actions that people undertake that then when they all aggregate up, they drive greater performance. And of course on a tower, this is even more important because one mistake can be magnified, but equally if you can learn and make a very incremental improvement, again you can um, achieve real benefits. So on the left there we've got a number of the KPIs, whether that's submittal processes, etc. And what we've done is we've developed a very, very um, a clear control framework, as I said before, that's really looked at the Kingdom Tower as a production line, a production line of different activities, set those KPIs that measure performance and then predict performance, and then drive to higher performance. So very simply, because I like to write, uh, draw simple diagrams, yes, you do need a series of lag measures. Yes, you do need to be able to respond when something's not going right or you can see something that's not happening. You have to drive action. So you measure to drive action. But the key focus of the program management role is the bottom part of that screen, which is actually about using the data, analyzing it, predicting it, and then informing action and decisions uh, moving forward. And that's really how we've tried to focus on the controls on the tower. 
So one area that we've done this is around wind modeling, very, very relevant um, for, the, for the kingdom and, uh, at the moment, as you can imagine. So what we've done here is said, look, let's go and look at data, historical data of wind speeds at different levels, 50 meters, 100 meters, 150 meters. Also use forecasting data and use that as a model as you look at the town and say, well, where are the high risk areas? And we're doing a monthly forecast here to see where the high, high wind areas are. So you can start to predict and start to influence the sequence of construction. You may even start to replan that construction um, uh, to affect that. It also helps, obviously, to make sure that all the health and safety uh, procedures you need uh, in place are, uh, are there as well. And we sit down with the team on a regular basis. As I said, we do a monthly forecast and then review it almost daily to say, well, how are we going to make sure that when we start to get to real heights um, uh, on the tower, we're implementing efficiently and safely? Another area here, um, uh, just to bring it to life, is um, around the floor cycle time. And again, we analyzed the construction uh, methodologies put forward. We actually broke it down to see, well, where, the, where were the points of failure likely to be? And actually looked to improve on logistics planning to improve the cycle. Now, we've taken the cycle down to something like 20 or 30% here by just forecasting, looking at the drawing submittal process, looking at the logistics process, and fine-tuning how that's being developed to drive that efficiency in what we're doing. Another area here has been on the drawing submittals as well, where I think contractually there's a 21-day cycle, but actually we said, look, there's some really key, um, although the team were performing pretty well, we knew that there were some hotspots coming up through Ramadan and Eid, and we also knew that the level of drawings was going to ramp up significantly uh, moving forward. So actually we unpacked the whole process and actually put a prioritized system in place where um, there's a seven-day cycle on priority turnaround and shifted the average turnaround from 17 to 15 days. Now, that was on the back of actually the team performing quite well, but our role was to say, look, that's fine, but this is coming down the track, and do we need to change the way that we're doing things? So that's um, uh, a summary in terms of uh, one aspect of program management, and I think the key message there for me is we tried to move from a position of reporting to one of forecasting and prediction and to drive fine-tuning efficiency in the delivery of, of the tower. But as, I, as, as Adrian um, posed a question, well, can towers have a much bigger impact? And in this case, on Jeddah and on the nation, well, my answer would be yes. But you won't know unless you try and measure it. And I think one of the other areas now that we're looking at around program management, and it does go down to this, this measurement, is saying, well, how do we know that this tower and the wider city is driving real benefit for, for the kingdom? And of course, this is not a small development. This is overlaid on uh, where we are today in New York. It's 5.3 million square meters of development. So these are big challenges that we're looking to um, uh, um, uh, coordinate and ensure happening in a smooth, smooth manner. So if you take, take the tower in the context of the wider city, what's the program manager's role is actually what we're looking at is how do you develop a wider benefits case that means that the decisions that you're making are the right decision to optimize a number of things. Yes, there's a commercial development imperative, but there's lots of other things at play here, whether it's social or economic, whether it's jobs, whether it's health, whether it's education. Okay, so to set that framework. And to bring that to life, we were all, we've also been involved in, in Doha on the Luceo development. There's a, a fantastic master plan there. But actually, what we found out that actually when you looked at the education strategy, the, the education strategy was fundamentally intertwined with the values of the residential um, developments on the scheme. And the values of the residential and, the, um, and, th and therefore the education strategy depended on attracting overseas top quality um, education providers, some of them from New York City and other parts of the world. Now, you're never going to do that unless you create the right environment from the education. And what we found was the next level of delivery on the master plan, the schools are in the wrong place. Okay, so you never would have got your international operators to come and open their schools there, which means you'd never achieve the values. So you have to fine tune the master plan a little bit to, and have that balance to make sure it's delivered. And the same thing will happen here as we implement different strategies. So our role is to make sure that those development ideals, and some of them are big, nation building, 
leads to an optimised delivery strategy and drives those informed decisions. Now, and I'll just share a little bit here in terms of some of the work we're doing, not on the Kingdom Tower at the moment, but actually, in, it's relevant for the Kingdom Tower, but actually on a major high-speed rail link in, in Asia. And it does set the framework of how to approach this wider benefit strategy, which all of these big developments now need to do, I think. So and this is just really indicating you've got to break the vision into a series of strategic goals um, and objectives and then individual KPIs okay, that drive that objective. The role of the program manager is to understand the interdependencies. It's not all going to be beautifully aligned and siloed where KPIs are all aligned with specific strategic goals. There are going to be interdependencies and there are going to be compromises and balances to be made. But in this scenario here, we looked at a number uh, of aspects. We broke it down into three, basically. There was economic, there was um, uh, environment, and then there was social goals. And the economic um, elements um, uh, were then um, uh, expanded, as, as were the others, to try and identify, well, look, you know, do we want to create uh, business? Do we want to create jobs? Is the, is the public realm that's a key thing, et cetera? So to defining in a little bit more detail, and then setting those specific KPIs. And in this particular instance, one of the big issues here was about attracting business. So how do you measure the fact that you attract business? Well, we actually said that we'd measure the number of new patents that are going to be lodged as a result of the businesses that come to uh, uh, this particular development. How do we measure jobs? Okay, unemployment rates, etc. cetera. Um, uh, and, and the principle goes on. And I think in here, in this particular instance, we, uh, we were able to model, and if you look at the numbers here, we're talking about a long time, this is into 2069, but you're able to demonstrate that actually you can get a return on investment, in this case, nine times return on investment. The point is that unless you actually go through this idea of how do you define the benefits case, the agglomeration benefits, um, uh, as they're often being called, you're never really going to know what the impact is. And I think my major programs at the moment, there's much greater emphasis now on ensuring that that work's done up front. Because then if we're playing the game, we know we're keeping the score and we know how well we're doing. So just to conclude, before I get the, the, the red sign, <laughs> almost got the red sign. Um, so key thing around uh, the Kingdom Tower, okay, there's huge amounts of innovation going on at all levels. Um, not, but it's not just through the design. Okay, we as the program managers, we have to innovate and we have to do some things that are very different, haven't been done before. Okay, but our role is not to report, it's not to police, it's not to create a constraint on that innovation. Actually, it's to enable it and to forecast and predict what's coming down, uh, coming down the track so we can manage those moving parts in the most efficient way. That's really what we're focusing on here on the, uh, on the Kingdom Tower. And of course, you can't build something like the Kingdom Tower without thinking about the wider benefits. And now, really, the focus is coming on, well, how do we measure the interdependencies? How do we measure the benefits to make sure that come 2030, come 2040, come 2050, someone's able to say, whatever reason, whether it's economic, political, or social, actually, this is what we've created.